Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. In today's video, I'll be reviewing this Rove R2 4K dash cam. This is a one channel dash cam with a front facing camera that records in 4K resolution and has built in Wi Fi and GPS. It features night vision recording, parking mode recording, and there's an optional hardware kit you can install, and that'll give you additional parking mode recording function like motion detection recording and time lapse recording. This dash cam is packed with a lot of features, and there are lots of information to go over. So let's get started. Let me show you the unboxing of this Rove R2 4K dash cam. This is a user manual. Quick start guide. There's a film you can install on your windshield and then you can mount the dash cam on top of the film. And here's the Rove R2 4K dash cam. Windshield mounts, mounting clips, USB cable, USB power cable. There's a windshield mount that uses double side tape, cigarette lighter power adapter, and a plastic pry tool. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. Let's have a closer look at this dash cam. On the front is a front facing camera. This dash cam records in 4K Ultra HD 2160p at 24 frames per second. Inside is a Sony IMX335 image sensor. The viewing angle of this lens is 150 degrees and it has true wide dynamic range for the best exposure in all lighting condition. Now this dash cam also has built in Wi-Fi and a built in GPS antenna. Over here on the left side is a speaker. Looking at the bottom, there's a microphone. On this side is a reset switch. On this side is a mini USB connector for connecting to the power cable. Below that is HDMI output port. On the other side, there's a memory card slot. Now this dash cam supports up to 512 gigabyte memory size. Below that is a power switch. Looking at the top, right here is a GPS antenna. This is where you install the windshield mount. And over here is a TV video output port. Now on the back there's a sticker here with some important notes. It tells you to use class 10 U3 speed micro SD memory card and make sure the memory card is formatted inside the dash cam. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. On the back is a large 2.4 inch color LCD display. Below the LCD display, there's a menu button, up select, Wi-Fi on off button, down select, and the OK button. Now if you look below that, there's a secondary menu. Here it says is mode back button, mute button, emergency lock button, LCD off, and record confirm button. A very nice thing about this dash cam is it comes with both types of windshield mount. This one here has a double side tape, and this one uses the suction cup. Now my first choice is this one with a double side tape because once you stick this onto the windshield, it's not going to come off. Now to install the mount, it's very simple. Slide this into the slot at the top of the dash cam. You can also rotate this and loosen this knob and adjust the angle. Now with this mount, you can also slide the dash cam off the mount like this and then reinstall it. Here I'll install a memory card. To power the dash cam, connect this end of the power cable to the dash cam, and then on the other end, plug into a cigarette lighter power adapter, and then plug this into your 12 volt accessory port. So let's power on the dash cam. Video mode. The first thing it'll prompt you is to format the memory card. Select OK. Formatting is complete. Press OK again. To set the date and time, you can do it manually, or use a GPS signal to set it up. Now go ahead and set your GMT time, press OK. Here it tells you you can start using the dash cam with the default settings, or you can go into the settings menu and make changes. Slow OK. Video mode. So right now you're looking at a live view of the camera, and with a flashing red dot that tells you it's recording right now. Looking at the date and time, you see it's not set right now, but once it has a GPS lock, it will automatically set the date and time. Now if you press the OK button, it will stop the recording. Now you can go into the menu, First menu item is resolution. Now by default it's set to 1920 by 1080. You can also set it to 2880 by 2160, 2560 by 1440, or 2304 by 1296. 
Next menu item, loop recording. By default, it's set to three minutes. Now this gives you the option to set it to off, but it'll record one single video file with a maximum size of four gigabyte. You can also set it for one minute loop, three minutes, or five minutes. I'm gonna keep it at three minutes. Wide dynamic range, by default is on. Exposure, here you can increase or decrease exposure. Time lapse recording, by default is off. If you want, you can set the recording to four frames per second, two frames per second, or one frame per second. Parking mode, by default is off. And here it tells you the parking mode will work without the hardware kit. It uses the internal battery to power the dash cam. And when it detects an impact, it will automatically turn on and record a short video clip. Now there is an optional hardware kit you can install for this Rove dash cam. And I will do a separate video showing you how to install the hardware kit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. 24 hour parking mode. Now with the 24 hour parking mode, you do have to install the hardware kit. And when I do the second video showing you the hardware kit, I will enable this option and show you how it works. Record audio. You can turn the microphone on and off. Mute off. Stamp. By default, the date, time, speed, and the GPS coordinate information is stamped onto the video. G sensor. By default, it's set to five, which is medium. You can turn it off or set it to high, which is nine. Speed unit, you can set it for kilometers per hour or miles per hour. High status icon, if you want, you can enable this to turn off all the icons on the LCD display so you only see the live view. By default is off. Live speed, by default is on. With this on, the LCD display will show you the speed you're traveling at. Distortion correction of the lens, by default is off. If you want to turn this on, you can. Rotate video, you can turn this on or off. Now we're back to resolution. Press the menu button. System settings. Now you're in the system settings. First item, Wi-Fi. You can turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Here you can set the day and time. Day format. Clock format. 12 hours or 24 hours. GPS time zone setting, which I've already set. Screensaver settings. By default, it's set to live view, so the LCD will show you the live view. Beep sound, you can turn on and off. Mute off. Speaker volume, here you can set to low, mid, or high. Boot up tone, by default is on. Language, here you can select different languages. TV mode is if you want to connect this to a TV and watch a video. License plate, here you can enter a license plate number. Frequency, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. GPS info. Here will show you the GPS satellite lock. Storage space. This will show you the total memory space and the memory that's free. Delay shutdown. By default is 5 seconds. You can turn it off or set it for 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Format reminder. By default is off. You can set a reminder for 15 days, 30 days, or 60 days. Format to format the memory card. Formatting is complete. Default settings. Here you can set the dash cam back to factory default. Firmware version. This is a software version of the dash cam. Press menu again to exit. Video mode. Let me show you how to connect the Rove mobile app to the dash cam. You'll first need to go to Apple App Store or Google Play Store and look for the app called Rove. Once you find it, install it. Open the app. Next, you need to turn on the Wi-Fi on the dash cam. Now you can go into the menu and turn it on, or you can press and hold the emergency button and that'll turn on the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi mode is on. Go into your phone's Wi-Fi setting, find the SSID Rove R24K, select it. Enter a password. The password is 12345678. Once you're connected, go back to the mobile app. On the main screen, you'll see the live view from the dash cam. If you want to take a still photo, press the photo icon at the bottom here. Press the camera icon, take a picture. The next icon at the bottom is folder. Here you can see all the recorded videos. Select the video file you want to play back. You can download this video or delete it. Let's go back. The last icon on the right is settings. 
Here you can select the camera settings. Here are the same settings you saw earlier on the dash cam. So for example, you can go to parking monitor and turn on and off. So with this app, you can look at the live view, download the recorded videos and make changes to the settings. Now take this dash cam to the vehicle, get it installed, and we'll check out the daytime and nighttime video recording. To install the dash cam, you can either use a mount with a double side tape and stick this directly onto the windshield or use a mount with a suction cup. And with this one, all you have to do is press this down on the windshield, lock it in place by turning this knob at the top, adjust the angle and tighten the knob on the side. Next, connect the power cable and then run this cable up to the headliner over to the A pillar and down to your center console. Plug the power adapter into your 12 volt accessory port. Once you turn on the ignition, the dash cam will power on automatically and begin recording. Now this dash cam does have parking mode recording even if you don't install the hardware kit. Without the hardware kit, the way the parking mode work is when you turn off the ignition, the dash cam will power down and if it detects an impact to the vehicle, it will power on automatically using the internal battery, record a one minute video clip, lock the recording and then turn itself off. Now if you install the hardware kit, then the dash cam's parking mode can be set up to do time lapse recording or motion detection recording. And as I mentioned, I'll do a second video showing you how to install the hardware kit. So right now I'll show you how the parking mode work by using the internal battery of the dash cam. You do have to make sure the parking mode is turned on. Press the menu button to go into the setup menu. Go down. Parking mode. Select OK. And the screen tells you the parking mode works from using the internal battery. Press the down arrow key to select on. Press OK. Now the parking mode recording is enabled. I'll go down on the menu one more. And there's a 24 hour auto parking. This is for the hardware kit parking mode. Now you also need to set the sensitivity of the G sensor. Go down on the menu. Go to G sensor, select OK. Now you can set this from one to nine. Number one is low impact detect. This is actually the most sensitive. And nine is the least sensitive. Exit the menu. Now turn off the vehicle. The dash cam will shut off and go into standby mode. To simulate an impact to the vehicle, I'll hit the A pillar in my vehicle. You see the dash cam will turn on and the screen will show you the parking mode was activated. Also on the LCD screen, this triangle icon here tells you this video clip will be locked and cannot be overwritten. After the one minute video recording, the dash cam will power off and go back into standby mode. And when you return to your vehicle and turn on the ignition, the dash cam will tell you there was a parking mode recording. Now you can play back the recorded video on the dash cam or on your mobile phone. First, I'll show you how to play back the video on the dash cam. Press and hold the menu button to change the mode to playback. Now it's in photo mode. Press it once more and hold it. Mode. Now it's in playback mode. Here you can scroll up and down and select the video clip you want to play back. Press OK. OK again to play back. Now it's playing back the recorded video. Now if you want to play back and download the video file on the app, first turn on the Wi-Fi on the dash cam by pressing the middle button right here. Mode is on. Go to your phone's Wi-Fi setting and connect to this dash cam. In the app, right now you're looking at the live view of the dash cam. To go into playback mode, select the folder icon at the bottom. Here you can select all the recorded files. Each file has a date and timestamp on it. Select the file to play it back. You can turn it to landscape mode for full screen playback. Now if you want to download this video to your phone, select the download icon at the top. Now the file is being downloaded to your phone. Now the download time does take about one to two minutes. If you want to play back the recorded video on your PC, you can go to rove-cam.com website, go to the support page and select downloads. Here you can download the GPS player software. Install the software. To play back the recorded video, you can take the micro SD memory card of the dash cam and put it into a card reader on your computer or you can connect the dash cam to your computer using a USB cable. To open the file, click the folder icon at the bottom left hand side, select the drive for the memory card, 
Find the file you want to play back and then select it. The main screen will play back the recorded video. The right side will have a Google map showing you the direction of travel. And below that, it will show you the speed you're traveling at. And that's how you can play back the recorded video and also view the GPS data. As you can see, this Rove R2 4K dash cam is packed with a lot of features. With a large LCD display, you can see a live video on the screen and play back the recorded video. And with the Rove app, you can download the recorded video directly to your phone. Now this dash cam on its own does have parking mode recording. And if there's an impact to the vehicle, it will turn on and record a one minute video clip. With a 4K resolution, the video recording has very good detail and you can easily read license plates in front of you. Now this dash cam retails for $120. If you want to learn more about it, check out the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.